Welcome everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know this is a review you've been waiting for a very long time. Um, it is the Specialized Turbo Levo. Before we get into the review, one favor to ask you guys, won't cost you anything. It won't even take that much energy. Just hit the subscribe button, please. We're trying to grow the channel. We would appreciate it greatly. So stay tuned and let's see how the Levo did. All right, folks, so one year in the making. We have had this Specialized Levo for quite some time, and um, we had to turn a lot of you guys down who've been asking for us to release this. We really wanted to put long-term miles on this bike. Uh, there were obviously some issues with the previous generation Levo uh, in terms of motors, belts, you know, other parts. So we really wanted to, to do our due diligence for you guys because it is a hefty investment to get into one of these bikes. And we're happy to say one year and we haven't had any problems with this bike. This suspension is in uh, some desperate need of a rebuild. But other than that, this bike is still one of our favorites in the test fleet. So let's dig in. This is a 160 millimeter, 150 millimeter EMTB with a 700 watt hour battery and 90 newton meters of torque. Specialized says it'll give you about a five hour ride time depending on your power mode, your weight, the ele elevation and terrain that you're riding in. Um, we've definitely done everything from very short full turbo runs to very long eco rides where we're just trying to eke out every last bit of juice we can. Um, and I would say the bike feels equally comfortable in either of those situations. It is a mullet bike, so it's a 27 and a half inch rear wheel with a 29er up front. Uh, that could be one of the issues, I guess, some epic or touring uh, e-mountain bike riders might have uh, some issue with, uh, just that smaller rear wheel, a little less rollover and speed. But for, I think what this bike is really awesome at, which is shredding, super gnarly, extreme, aggressive riding. Having that shorter rear end, having a stiffer rear end, stiffer wheel is a trade-off we're willing to make. We're big fans of mullets on e-bikes, um, unless again, it's a shorter travel bike that we're just using for long distance mileage. Um, so getting into the E of this e-bike, uh, Gorilla Glass here on this new Mastermind TCU, you've got, I think, over a hundred customizable display options that you can get in here. It will sync up with heart rate monitors. Um, I mean, the amount of displays that you can come up with are, are pretty awesome. You now have a visible percentage that you can see, um, mileage, you name it. Like you can, you can see it in there. It also syncs up to your, uh, to the specialized app on your phone, the mission control app. You can diagnose your bike over the air updates. Uh, you can track rides. Very cool features. You can even modify um, some of the settings within the bike in that app. You also have the micro tune uh, option here on the controller where if you press and hold the plus button for two seconds, you can then customize the amount of power uh, in an exact increment rather than using like the preset factory options. We didn't really use that option all that much to be honest. Some people love it and use it all the time. We were pretty happy just with the factory settings and I gotta say that we're pretty much all turbo all the time. So um, that's enough of that. And then down below that, you've got an updated 2.2 drive unit. Again, 90 Newton meters of torque, specialized work to improve the durability and the longevity. Uh, the belts are a different material. They're a little bit wider, a little bit more robust, designed to withstand the rigors of, you know, aggressive e-mountain bike riders. Um, we have joined some Levo Facebook groups and forum boards just because, you know, over this last year, we wanted to see what other riders were having issues with or talking about. And uh, while it does seem like some very high mileage riders, they could possibly have hacked the bikes or they could possibly be very heavy and riding very steep terrains. Maybe they're in really mucky, nasty conditions. Um, although I don't think that'll be an issue because this thing is sealed off quite well. Um, there are still some people that are reporting issues 
We have not had any um, pass this bike around, beat on it, pressure washed it, mud, snow, ice, you name it, it's still ticking. Um, charge port access is also an area that Specialized wanted to improve. There's a really cool locking door, and then behind that locking door is a weather tight uh, kind of magnetic seal. Um, something that we had issue with was that locking door. We actually snapped off the little tab that activates the lock or unlock mechanism. Um, but we have seen and read a lot of other people are actually snapping that whole door off. And um, it, with some recent talks with Specialized, it sounds like they're aware of that. They've seen other people having issues and they're, sounds like working on maybe an improved design there, but you gotta be careful if you have it in your garage and you have that door open, uh, maybe you unplug the charger and, and go to back it out of wherever you store the bike. If that door is open and the crank arm spins back as you're rolling the bike it'll just snap that door off and then you know that's uh, a bit of a bummer you gotta order a part hopefully it's in stock and then go for your ride with you know uh, a little bit of an exposed area luckily that magnetic weather tight seal that goes to the charging port is very good at its job and uh, i guess it's not the end of the world unless you're in super nasty conditions but still something we'd like to see improved um, all right, moving into the mountain bike aspect of this thing, RX Tune suspension absolutely nailed it. I think Specialized did a great job just taking the influence from the, uh, the Specialized Stump Jumper Evos and Stump Jumpers and just all of their bikes and have made a bike that is very capable and confident being ridden uh, at a pretty wide level of riders, I think. You know, some bikes can be very polarizing. They could be on that, like that jagged edge of, this is a race guy tune. And if you are charging hard 100%, it's gonna feel great. But if you're out for a casual ride, um, it's just gonna beat the crap out of you. It's gonna feel really stiff and harsh. It's gonna decelerate over square edge bumps. Um, or conversely, you could have something that's a very plush, soft, casual rider tune. And then, you know, riders who are seeking to be super aggressive and harsh, are gonna have to add volume reducers and work on damping and other tunes to try to keep that bike high in the travel and riding the way they want it to. Don't have to do that with the Specialized. I think they've done a very good job just making a bike that works for a wide range of riders um, and takes very little time or effort to tune. Up front, this 38 fork, again, we added a couple volume reducers to get the feel we wanted, that plushness and softness off the top with the progression at the end of the stroke. From there, dialed. Um, again, it's a need of some rebuild. A lot, a lot of miles and rough miles, nasty miles. So uh, it's it's starting to fade after a year, but um, nevertheless, Specialized nailed the tune and the spec on this bike. We're stoked. Uh, speaking of spec, uh, it does come with a full SRAM drivetrain and brake setup. You might notice that I've switched uh, a couple of small things here. Being that this is one of my favorite bikes, um, we've used it as a test bed to test a lot of different wheels, different brakes, uh, you name it. So I currently have some TRP DHR Evos on here, which um, I would love to see spec'd on this and many more e-bikes because they're awesome and they have a ton of power and they don't need to be bled all the time. But uh, it does come with the SRAM code brakes, uh, which worked fine for a while. Um, other than that, the wheels that we had that came on here worked fine. It was a absolutely great rolling working bike that withstood a lot of abuse for a very long time and I think will treat a lot of riders well. So another thing that I think Specialized really nailed was the geometry on this bike um, and furthermore the uh, adjustability of the geometry on this bike. You can take the head tube angle from anywhere between 63 and 65.5 degrees. There are six possible configurations. The headset cup that comes in the bike is centered. There is a plus one or minus one, which will give you one full degree of adjustment. Out back in the horse link, you've got a seven millimeter adjustable uh, flip chip that will raise or lower bottom bracket seven mil, but it will also alter the head tube angle by half a degree. So you can make full degree or half degree adjustments here. Uh, and in conjunction with uh, any tunes or adjustments in the rear end. For 90% of the testing on this bike, we rode the bike in the stock configuration, which is a 64 and a half degree head tube angle. Um, 
I think that is a very versatile number. It really gives me the quick, snappy handling and maneuverability that I crave on flatter, more technical, or maybe some slower trails and while climbing very steep technical stuff. But it's still slack enough to give me the stability, uh, the predictability and confidence that I need when things get really steep and fast. As far as sizing goes, uh, I'm 5'11". I opted to run a size S4, um, taking cues again from some of the other more aggressive gravity bikes and specialized line. They are going with a reach-based size structure. So um, at my height, I could fit S3, S4, or S5 bikes. Um, the difference being reach, uh, because all their bikes have a low standover and low C2 heights. 475 to 480 is kind of my ideal window for reach. That S4 has a 477, so it was right in my wheelhouse. I think that blends stability with playfulness. Um, you know, I find bikes that are too long get very cumbersome, especially with an e-bike, trying to manual them, uh, snap them around corners, you know, jumping and picking up off little features. That, that weight being farther out front um, is just too much. I don't, I'm not a fan. Uh, for the type of riding and the, the raw trails that, that we usually go out and search for, a little bit shorter bike is a lot more fun. So uh, I think 477 on that S4 is perfect and um, I'm very happy with that. I would absolutely pick that size once again. Moving into where this bike excels. Um, I think, honestly, I think this bike does really well in a ton of places. Now, as far as power delivery, climbing, pedaling this bike. I think Specialized has done a good job creating a bike that is, is right up with the competition. It is not the best at, at climbing or just the intuitive nature of, of how this thing comes on, but it is far from the worst. I think it is right up in the mix. Each drive unit has its own characteristics, right? Like anything else in bikes or, the, or life, right? Uh, some riders and some train may like Bosch better, some might like Shimano, some might prefer the Specialized system. Um, I think this is in the running and depending on the feel and the type of assistance that you want, you could love it. Um, I don't think there's anybody that wouldn't love it or at least like it or be happy with it because it comes on strong, it has good power, um, and it just does a good job of having a nice consistent feel across the board. We have noticed over time, it feels like it, it might be getting a little bit louder, um, especially like if we're doing long kind of self-shuttle days where we're lo climbing lots of feet on steep hills. As the day progresses and that thing keeps getting used and hotter, it does feel like there might be a slight power drop and a, an increase in noise, like a kind of a hum or a whine that comes out of it. Um, we're definitely hearing that. Uh, not terrible, but it is something that we are aware of. Aside from that, comfortable position both climbing and descending again you can ad adjust it in a number of ways to suit you if uh, you're not happy with it off the floor but i think it's a very comfortable climbing position technical steep climbs rough climbs seated climbing position is comfortable thanks to that suspension setup does well there so if you like hill climb challenges if you like steep climbs if you just like going out and pedaling and covering long miles solid option on the flip side, right, when it comes to traversing or descending, this bike is equally awesome. It, comfortable, stable, predictable. Um, you know, our, our dissected series is meant to be a, a first look, you know, with support of a brand to kind of get you guys content real quick and early. And so we got this bike with uh, Joe Buckley and Alan Cook from Specialized who came up and dropped one off. That first ride was in some nasty conditions and I instantly felt comfortable on this bike on some pretty chunky, fast and gnarly terrain. And it never changed throughout our test period, no matter who we gave the bike to. Um, I think that is a testament. When you can hop on a brand new test bike on a trail that maybe you know it really well, or maybe you've never ridden it and not think about the bike and just think about riding, that is a very good compliment to a bike, its geometry and its suspension platform. I think riders who are aggressive and love to charge hard. They like sending it deep. They love charging over rough, fast, chunky terrain. They're gonna love this bike. I think older, more casual riders, new riders to the scene who want uh, an e-bike that 
can adjust and evolve with them as they progress. Maybe they want to start out with a 65 degree head tube angle for a little bit more manageable and faster handling of a bike, and then they get better and want to slacken it out to 63 and a half degrees, you can do it. Um, this bike is very versatile, and I think a wide range of riders uh, are gonna enjoy this bike. There's a number of options available um, from the, uh, do I say outrageously $15,000 S-Works model? I don't know, it's sold out. Maybe it's not that outrageous. Um, our model here retails at $13,000, and then you've got some models down below, and you've even got some aluminum options as well. Um, you know, spec, value, price, that is, we're not even gonna get into if we think it's reasonable or not because everybody's wallet is different. And uh, while we don't have $13,000 to drop on this bike, we're sure glad we have it because it kicks ass. <laughs> um, that being said, we might try to find a more affordably uh, priced version and hop up the parts as we go. But um, value aside from a performance standpoint, this bike rips. Um, definitely one of the crew's favorite in the last year. We have no issues recommending this bike to you guys. So if you're looking for a do-it-all e-bike that uh, you can go out and crush miles or you can shred the gnarliest trails you can find, um, this thing might be worth taking a look at. It is awesome and we thoroughly enjoy it. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. Um, I know it was a little long, but We've had a year to ride this bike and we all really like it and uh, kind of just wanted to converse with you guys and tell you about our time and what we like and um, what we think about this thing. So leave a comment down below. If you guys have a Levo and you've had some issues, let us know. We'd be curious to see um, what kind of issues or problems you've been having. Obviously Specialized is gonna watch the video and it'd be great for them to be able to see feedback and what you guys think as well. Uh, we'll answer any questions we can please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. It would be hugely appreciated and it's super valuable for us. I know the analytics show most of you guys are not subscribed, so take a second. We'd greatly appreciate it. So thanks very much and we'll see you in the next video.